Our gospel reading for today is from Luke 24, verses 1 through 12. It's found on page, page 90 in the New, York, New Testament section of your pew Bible.
because they were written years later, have been tinted, colored, tinted, sh shaded by the relationship of the writer and others with the resurrected Christ. Luke seems to me to that the seems to me that Luke's writing <coughs> of empty tomb is very important. The empty tomb itself, but not as important as the presence of the resurrected Christ eventually experienced as spirit in the lives of the believers and in the heart of the church. Luke, like the other Gospels, tells us that women were the first, women were the first to discover the empty tomb. And they were the first to believe that Jesus was crucified, who was crucified was indeed alive. As in each account, gospel account, the resurrection was not expected, was not expected by the cluster of, of, of Jesus' followers. Uh, even though the gospels tell us that Jesus had predicted his passion and triumph over death, even though that was part of what Jesus had told them, when it actually happened, that gruesome, gruesome uh, crucifixion, execution, of, of Jesus, the one they had given their lives to for, for over those three years. When it actually happened, then they assumed it was over. It was done. In Luke, the women <coughs> planning to anoint Jesus' body for burial went to the tomb early in the morning only to find that Jesus' body was not there. Instead, they found two men in brilliant clothing. They quickly assessed that these were messengers of God, or angels. And the angels asked, perhaps chiding the women just a bit, why do you seek the living among the dead? Don't you remember that he told you this would happen? And then they remembered. They remembered Jesus' prediction. They immediately rushed back to, to tell the disciples what they had seen. Ten of the eleven disciples discounted what they shared, what was shared with them as idle chat. And Luke, written in the context of, of his culture, does not follow up on the significance of the women's witness. Dismissed by the men, they disappear from the narrative. The degree of disregard that the men showed the women uh, spoke to the immaturity of the Christian movement at that particular time. It was non-existent, really. It just sort of, it seemed to be shattered in fact. And how captive by the culture it was held at the time of Luke's writing that women would have no voice. As I read this, I thought about the women in our church. I thought about my wife. And I realized that there's no way that would have been the end of the story. <laughs> I, in, in my picturing this, this gathering of disciples and others and the, and the women coming back with this excitement, and, and telling the story and then being dissed. You know, I, 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 in my, in my, I have two, I have, there, there, there are two uh, imagine, imaginations or uh, trails that my imagination take. One is what may have happened here is the women were pushed off to the corners and are mumbling to themselves, you know, and you can imagine what they might have been mumbling. <laughs> And the other is women putting their foot their feet down and rising up and saying, you can imagine what they might have said. <laughs> <laughs> Peter was the only one who responded to the announcement by the women. He, he ran in a positive way. He ran, he ran to the grave, looked inside, finding the linen cloths alone that is without the body of Jesus. He was amazed. But we have no indication from Luke that Peter did or said anything. It's not in the story. It simply says that he was amazed. 
Mary Boskin, uh, who teaches at uh, teaches New Testament and gender studies at Wake Forest says Peter alone allows for some possibility that what the women have, have recounted may be true but he has to see for himself neither their words nor are those of Jesus are enough for Peter to trust the truth of what the women have testified sure enough after running to the tomb to find it empty except for the linen cloths in which Jesus' corpse had been wrapped, Peter returned home, amazed at what had happened. Later that day, we read, read on in the chapter, later that day, the two disciples on the road to Emmaus encounter someone, a stranger. And as they walk, they talk, and in the and they, and they tell this person that has joined them about the events in Jerusalem, about the crucifixion of Jesus. And then the one who walks with them teaches them from the Old Testament. And then they pause at the end of the long walk and they break bread and it's in the breaking of the bread. They realize that Jesus has been with them all along. As I read the the story today, the gospel reading today, I wondered, why did the women respond so quick, quickly when Peter just seemed to be stupefied? Uh, perhaps they had an edge. After all, they, they did have a conversation with angels. Or have, perhaps they, they, quickly, they were quickly motivated because they were in a group. They were not alone. Uh, the presence of others are can increase confidence in the, in the message, and courage for the task, and, 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 the, and the presence of others can also stir compassion. The woman, it was not just one woman, one person, it was a group of women, a group of people. And they were probably looking at each other and said, did, we, did you hear what I heard? Do you see what I see? What does this mean for us? Let's go tell somebody. This, they, I don't even know if as they were rushing back to the disciples, if they were thinking, if they were thinking that they're going to think we're crazy. They're going to think we're made, this is, we made this up. I don't know what the conversation was along the way, but in a group, in a group, they, they were able to go and, and, and give their witness. And I think the women were eager to offer hope to the hopeless. They had a sensitivity for the needs of the community. And they had a word for the community. I wonder how I would have responded had I been one who was there. Would I have been like the bullheaded disciples, so disappointed that I would not even consider the possibility that Jesus was alive? Boo me once, shame on you. Boo me, as Scott George Bush said. Boo me twice, shame on me. Or would I have been like the like most of the world around them, others in Jerusalem, unaware, apathetic, disinterested? Would I have been like Peter, awed by the empty tomb, excited about the possibility, but not quite back on board? not believing enough to risk again, but getting there. Or would I have been like the women, full of joy, re-energized, re and aware that what, has, that, uh, that what has just happened is really, really, really good news. Today, like millions around the world, we've gathered for purpose, perhaps Numerously, maybe uh, several purposes, plural. Uh, most Sundays, if, if I stop to think about why I'm here, I, I find numerous reasons for being here. One of them is that I'm the, I'm the interim pastor. But we gather, don't we, for different reasons. You come today for different reasons. Some of us gather out of our customs that this is Easter, this is what we do. 
Uh, we, can, we gather to connect with the people of God because it is what we do, especially on this holy day. And some of us may gather to connect with others who are gathered. Connect by our, and some of us have gathered because it helps us to connect with our family, not just our family and friends here, but family and friends of the past. And maybe, maybe we have gathered to hear a word from and feel a, a nudge of the resurrected one. One of my friends from my Mississippi past, a man named Ken Schmidt, and I've heard, and Ken did a lot of preaching around places, you know, and he, and, uh, and, and sometimes if you hear people enough, you realize, oh, this is the way he starts every service, you know. One of the things that when we pray at the very beginning, he would read the scripture, and then we would close our eyes, and he would pray, and he would say, and he would say, God, as we, as we sit here in the silence, help us to hear the soft shuffling of sandal feet around us, implying the present, that, that Jesus was present. Today's scriptures remind me that people recognize the presence of God and call and, and the call of God by different means. And their responses to the touch of God in their, in their lives will vary depending on their personalities, experiences, and commitments. Though no boxes are big enough to contain any of us, we tend to relate to God and others by similar patterns. Some of us will relate to God in one way, and others of us in another. The Word of God, the call of God, the challenge of God may come to one of us in one way, and we can receive it may come to another one of us in another way and, and receive it, and you may receive it that way. For example, I tend to be warm and reserved by nature. Uh, God speaks to me best in the midst of community. Uh, I hear God's calling in, in my life uh, best through assurance and, and invitation. Sometimes I'm not too bold. I want somebody to take me by the hand and say, come along with me. Other people are very independent, but also reserved. The call of God may come to them in a quiet way, perhaps through a specific plan, a noble idea which grabs their attention. They focus on details and make sure that things are right. They may be drawn to God and God's mission by, by a noble cause. And, it, and if they go alone, it, 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 it's all right, because they are going where the truth is. There are others who are, are warm and assertive people, the warm fuzzies of the world. They are the, the oil that makes the machinery work. They are they're, they're touched by the needs of others and the possibilities of being a part of God's repair team. Joy is a motivator and can, and, and can be part of God's calling. And the promise of joy may be a part of God's a calling on their lives, may be the way that God grabs their attention. And some people are independent and assertive. They are the shapers and the movers. They, like, they, like Peter, are really drawn to the, to, the, to the awesomeness of God. God may grab their attention and point them in a, in a direction by putting them before them a plan or a dream. Martin Luther King was this kind of responder. In our church, we have people who respond weekly in some way or another. In, in one of these ways, or perhaps a combination of patterns. Some of us have been around each other so long that we, like old couples, can finish each other's sentences. We know the kinds of things, the kinds of things that will grab the hearts of those around us. That's part of the joy of being a part 
being uh, committed, a committed part of a, of a, of a community. Is as the years pass, as the days pass, you learn how to help be the voice of God to one another. I've heard say that the proof of the resurrection to the world was not the empty tomb. After all, very few people saw the empty tomb, right? And it was not even, it was not even the appearance of the risen Christ. But the real, real, real proof of the resurrection of the world was the spirit-filled church. It was the results. It was the presence of that living Christ that, that not only appeared to his disciples, but then became available to all. We call that Holy Spirit. We use different ways to talk about the presence of Jesus in our lives. But it's that presence that gives us courage, points us in direction. It's, the, it's that presence that gives us compassion, causes us to reach out to others. When the world sees that, then they scratch their, it's, they, the world scratches its head and wonders about, about the aliveness of God, <clears throat> the presence of Christ in the world. The book of Acts is Luke's sequel to the gospel. The passage that, that Leslie read gives a brief description of the, of the movement of the church out into the world and the growing awareness that Christ came to bring forgiveness to all people. The nature of this message is that it is ever expanding. The, go the, the gospel is ever expanding. The outreach is ever expanding and, and, and the inclusion is increasing. In today's reading, Peter was awed by the empty tomb, the gospel reading, but did nothing at the moment. It did nothing at the moment. In the Acts passage, we find Peter preaching boldly and recounting the story. But the Acts passage didn't tell us was that, that, that Peter was talking to Cornelius, and Cornelius was a Roman centurion. And he was talking to, to Cornelius and his household and all those around. Cornelius was a seeker of God, and Peter had just had a dream. And the dream was, was that the gospel was for all people. And, the, and here Peter was with this person who was a part of the occupation army that controlled so much of his life. Here Peter was speaking boldly and embracing him as a brother. The expansion continues, doesn't it? Down through history, sometimes we like to put it in a bottle, the gospel in a bottle, and we and, and it, and it's ours. The way we do it is ours. This, this is the only way to do it. And we have discovered that, that the gospel cannot be contained. And that's the story of the book of Acts. The gospel cannot be contained. And it breaks through barrier after barrier after barrier. So today we have this glimpse, this glimpse of the, of the, of the beginning, this encounter with empty tombs and angels, and we have this, and we have this, and we have the, the women who believe strongly, who were the first evangels, the first to tell the good news, and the first to be rebuffed for telling for bringing the good news. And we have grieving, lost disciples who cannot believe, and we have Peter who sort of is on his way. And today we gather and reflect on that. And we wonder, at least I invite you to wonder, where you are in the story. Are you one? Are you we like the town people, apathetic and not aware that anything's happening? 
It's happening. It's happening. My prayer for us is that we will always be Easter people. Easter people like the women. We saw and believed and carried the message. Easter people also, like Peter, who saw and were and, and was amazed and then became the voice piece for the risen Christ. 